talk to you tonight about painful economic transition that is looming in front of humanity. In my previous speech, I talked about the transition from the forager lifestyle to the farming lifestyle and how that was very traumatic because it required us to change our social organization as well as our ethical norms. I believe this new transition is going to be equally painful, but we're not going to be able to avoid it because of the relentless logic of economic competition. This new paradigm depends on the concept of the giga corporation. So a giga corporation is just a company with a billion users. You're familiar with all these brand names, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, Facebook. Here's some stats about giga corporations. The iPhone has 1.4 billion users. Facebook has nearly 3 billion users. Google has almost 5 billion users. Imagine that. LinkedIn was very proud to achieve the 1 billion user mark. That happened quite recently. I've focused here on tech, but there's also a lot of non-tech companies like Starbucks, Walmart, and McDonald's. As you know, I was a LinkedIn employee for several years, till about a year ago. I probably spent some time complaining and bellyaching to you about this job. I'm sure I complained a lot to my friends and family. And I'm not going to go into all of the details. And I shouldn't say it was so terrible. It was very cushy in some ways. But what I want to talk about for this speech is the amount of work I had to do. I basically had very little real work. I had some busy work, but the important projects were very few and far between. There were more engineers than good projects to work on. So all of the high impact projects had tons of competition just to get involved with it. So I ended up having very low impact and I was often quite bored and disengaged with the work. So as I'm saying this to you, you're probably thinking, well, yeah, of course they fired you, Dan. But no, in fact, they wanted me to stay. I probably, sh I thought I should be fired. I wasn't having much impact, but they didn't fire me. They wanted me to stay. And not only that, they, they paid me a lot of money. I was getting more compensation than any other job I had in my life. And I spent a lot of time thinking about this. And what I realized finally is that it's because of this incredible economics of the giga corporate career. Basically, the idea is you can take a product and just improve it by a tiny, tiny amount, one penny worth of value. And that produces $10 million of value because there's a billion people who get that benefit. Now, even then, you don't capture all of that money yourself. Customers get most of it. The company gets another big share of it. You get a fraction, but that's still a pretty significant amount of money. Now, I want to compare that to my current work situation as a small entrepreneur. It's very challenging work. The, I'm talking to people directly, and they love what I'm building for them. It's really helping them in their jobs because a lot of them have very aspects of their job that are very tedious and monotonous, and I'm streamlining that, automating that. And I'm actually working hard. I'm producing a lot of output, building a lot of code. But realistically, I doubt I will ever make this economically sustainable. And even if I do make a little bit of money on it, I can't imagine I'll ever make as much as I did at LinkedIn. Now, I'm focusing on my life as a tech engineer, but I think a lot of people are in this boat. So teachers, for example, have a class of 30 kids at a time. Doctor sees 15 patients a day. A lawyer maybe handles 100 cases a year. These are all professionals who are doing very important work and are delivering a lot of value, but they're just not delivering it to a lot of people. Okay, The, the numbers of beneficiaries of this productivity is relatively small. So I believe that the gigacorp economy is simply a better engine, more efficient economic engine. And to reiterate the idea here, the gigacorp operates by creating a one size fits all product and mass producing it. You hire thousands of employees to improve that product just by a small, each person just needs to chip in a small contribution to the product and it eventually becomes really, really good. And then you take that product and you sell it to billions of people. 
I think the iPhone is the paradigmatic example of this engine. I've also put the Xbox on here, not because the Xbox is life-changing or earth-shattering, but it's just, it's actually an amazing piece of technology, even though people don't think it's some sort of revolutionary thing. It's still pretty amazing. Now, I want to paint a picture of the future economy for you. And in this economy, everyone works for a gigacorp. All the jobs are at companies like Microsoft or Google or other tech companies that we heard haven't been founded yet. All of the products and services you buy are purchased from gigacorps. So even in areas that you don't think of as being related to big companies, so housing, education, and healthcare. In this world, when you go to see a doctor, it's not a human doctor, it's a robot doctor. And that robot doctor measures you and scans you and pokes you and prods you and does the most comprehensive analysis and computation to produce a diagnosis. And that diagnosis is the most accurate possible given the information. The doctor, by the way, also listens to you as much talking as you want to do. He, it will listen to you, unlike human doctors. And then the doctor prescribes medicine to you and potentially even performs a surgery on you if that's what you need. That may seem daunting, that may seem uninspiring, but this diagnosis will be better than any human doctor can produce. The surgery will be more precise than any human doctor can perform. <clears throat> In this world, medical professionals still have a role. And that role is to make a tiny improvement in the quality of the diagnosis and the surgery. So for example, maybe your whole career is dedicated to improving the performance of the of diagnosing a certain kind of cancer, and you only achieve a 1% improvement in, in the performance, but that 1% improvement yields thousands of lives that are saved because this software and this technology is delivered to billions of people across the world. So I hope you think that this is a serious, not a threat, but something that's gonna be a big traumatic change to our notions of work. I mentioned in the previous talk that the transition from forager to farming lifestyle was very traumatic. The transition from the farm to the factory was very traumatic as well. I think this is what really launched the communist and Marxist movements. Now we're going to transition from factories to giga corporations. Now, I don't want you to try to avoid this transition because I think there's a harsh lesson of history, which is that societies that try to avoid these tr transitions get left behind. If the, the societies that tried to avoid farming got left behind, countries that didn't want to industrialize got left behind by history. So we need to embrace this new model and we need to adapt to the changes and the dislocations that is it is going to create. Thanks very much.